Hello everyone and welcome to Scream Stream where every week I scour the web to separate the best from the worst of digital horror so you don't have to. I'm James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do every week is pick a horror film from one of the various streaming services, give it a spoiler-free review, and let you know if it's worth watching. There's a lot of horror films out there, so my goal is to make sure you're spending your time watching the best ones. Uh, I also will sometimes cover uh, horror shorts, horror uh, comic books, horror video games, things like that. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at screenpod.com where you can find links to all of my social profiles, subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher, and get the show notes for each episode. You can also drop me a line with comments and suggestions to screamstreamcast at gmail.com. Screamstream is listener supported, and you can support the podcast uh, one of three ways. Uh, the first being Patreon over at patreon.com slash Screamstream. You can donate as little or as much as you like, but if you give at least $1 or more, you'll get the original Screamstream podcast that ran from 2014 to 2015 uh, a week early, and then they're available for the public, uh, and you'll also get behind the screens pod behind the scenes podcast uh, when the screaming stops. Uh, you'll receive a private RSS feed that you can add to any podcast app, uh, and then also, if you'd like to support me through uh, my Amazon affiliate link, you can head over to screenpod.com, and whenever you want to shop on Amazon, just click on my affiliate uh, link in the sidebar there, and I will get a kickback from everything that you buy at no extra cost to you. Uh, and remember that I don't know who buys what. Uh, I do see some of the stuff that people buy, though. And then finally, the easiest way to support ScreamStream is to share the podcast with your horror, with the horror fanatics in your life and help grow the ScreamStream community. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, or wherever you do most of your social media. Share ScreamPod.com in as many places as you can. Now, I do want to first off apologize for this show being a day late. We had a really busy weekend, uh, lots of stuff going on, and then... Uh, last night, I'm recording this on Monday, last night we did a late showing of Thor Ragnarok, which was fine, it's, a, it's fine, it's a superhero movie, and if you're really into superhero movies, you're going to love it. Um, I thought it was, I mean, it's it's a good superhero movie, I guess. <laughs> it's. I didn't think it was as good as, like, I didn't get excited about this one as I did with, like, Deadpool or uh, Doctor Strange. But it was a well-made superhero movie. Enough about that. Let's move on to some horror. This week I have two films for you, uh, which I'll explain why a little later. Uh, the first one is going to be Madman, and then right after that is going to be Terror Train. Two slasher films from the 80s. Uh, and so let's, uh, let's dig right into this one, starting with Madman from 1981. This one's written by Joe... Joe, Joe Gian, Giannone, Joe Giannone, directed by Joe Giannone. I don't know. I'm probably butchering the crap out of that name. And I apologize, Mr. Joe Giannone, if you are listening to this. Uh, this stars Galen Ross, Tony Fish, Harriet Bass. And for a brief plot synopsis, at a summer camp for youths, for youths a cocky preteen calls out the name of a mass serial killer, Madman Mars. Suddenly, counselors are being maimed and slaughtered in various ways by the backwoodsman who has returned when his name was called. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's let's start off with the acting here. The acting, for the most part, was decent, I guess, for like an 80s low-budget slasher. Uh, most of the people, or most of the people in the film at the time were first first-comers. Or newcomers to to the industry, with the exception of Galen Ross, uh, who was who has been in a few films prior to this one. So even though all these all these folks were were fairly fresh actors, they did a pretty good job. Nothing was overly goofy as far as you know the way they moved, the way they said the lines. Nothing was was too goofy with the actors. However. The Madman Mars character, most of his voicing, I think, was done 
prior to filming. It was probably ADR done in a studio somewhere. Man, uh, <laughs> they shouldn't have given him a voice because the voice that he did have, uh, he sounded like a cute little dog playing with a, a squeaky toy, like growling at a squeaky toy. Either that or uh, he sounded like a constipated pit bull. He just had like this grrr sound. And it was too cutesy for, for a serial killer. And it just ruined the effect. Any kind of scare factor that Madman Mars might have had. Uh, so let's talk about the story about Madman Mars. Uh, so originally, this was going to be a film based on the Cropsy murderer, or the the Cropsy maniac, and Cropsy was a uh, uh, insane asylum in New York. And there's actually a really good documentary about this on on Netflix called Cropsy. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. Uh, but anyway, it's based on the maniac from Cropsy who killed quite a few people. Uh, but what happened was the filmmakers Joe Giannone found out that. There was another film in production at the same time called The Burning, which was also based on the Cropsy Killer. So they both ended up changing their stories a little bit. And so the Madman folks completely rewrote their story, created a madman farmer guy who kills people at a summer camp, which oddly enough really resembles Friday the 13th, which came out uh, a year before this, I think. I think Friday the 13th came out in 1980, and this was in 81, I believe. Uh, I, I guess I should say this also has a 5.4 on IMDb. Um, just kind of go ahead and get that out there. But for the story, I mean, it's a super simple story. Some kid yells out Madman Mars three times, and Madman Mars comes and um, hunts down the, uh, the campers. I will say that the film isn't overly gory. I was expecting a whole lot more gore, more cool kills, I guess. That sounds really sadistic, but after watching things like Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th and Victor Crowley, you expect really cool kills. Uh, this did not have really cool kills. These were very just straightforward most for the most part. It just... And, you know, and the other thing, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the film where it just makes absolutely no sense. Like, in one scene, Madman Mars is at the the camp. And in the very next scene, he's all the way in the woods where some other camper went to go look, for, where one of the counselors went to go look for a camper who strayed off from the group. It's like he he teleported somehow, and that made no sense. Uh, special effects look really good. You know, this is the eighties, early eighties. So everything had to be done practically. There was no CGI. So a lot of the gore did look good. What gore there was aesthetically, the film looked good. Most of it was shot at night. I think actually, you know what? The entire thing was shot in like, or took place in one night. So it was all shot during the night. Um, a lot of the, the cinematography looked really good. Uh, there's a lot of really cool shots, a lot of nice, like depth of field. So, you know, visually the film was good. Acting was pretty good. Story was super simple. The main issue I had with this one was Madman Mars having that voice and it just made him just comical. So here's my final verdict on, on this one. It's not a good film. It, it probably shouldn't even have a 5.4. It's available on Shutter and Amazon Prime. And if you don't have these services, this is not a movie I'd tell you you have to get Shutter to watch this movie. Or you have to sign up for Prime just to see this movie. It's not that great. Bypass it, which is why I'm doing a second film this episode. Because I didn't want to, you know, just do a horrible film. I want to give you something good at least. So that moves us into Terror Train. And Terror Train is from 1980. And this was uh, written by T.Y. Drake, directed by Roger Spottiswood, who also, uh, he did 
the sixth day, he did Turner and oh Turner and Hooch. He directed Tomorrow Never Dies, Air America. So he's directed a lot of like really big movies, uh, a lot of good movies actually. Shoot to Kill, Best of Times, Under Fire, uh, The Pursuit of D.B. Cooper, uh, a lot of really good films. And this also stars, or this stars, uh, Ben Johnson, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Hart Bachner. And of course, we know Jamie Lee Curtis from uh, two years earlier. She was in Halloween. She was the main character in Halloween. And so, so let's start off with the acting. I think all the acting in this film was really well done, uh, especially for an 80s slasher film. I think in the slasher genre, especially in the 80s, I know people are going to get a little upset when I say this, but it doesn't take a whole lot to act in one of these films. You basically have to run around, scream a lot, and then die. And that's okay, because slashers have their place. I like, I like my fair share of slashers. This one, however, I think the acting was a little more complex, even right down to David Copperfield's character. He had a cameo, and the, this is the only film, I think, that he, or only fiction film uh, that he did, and he was actually really good in this movie. And when we look at characters, even like the conductor and the engineer, they all played their parts perfectly. There was a little bit of humor from, from various characters and it was, it wasn't like goofy humor. It was well-placed humor or well-timed humor. And I think the acting really lends uh, to the story because the story is kind of predictable and the acting makes up for that. And while the story is a little predictable, uh, it, it's still kind of complex uh, because you have the relationships from where you get to see relationships between uh, quite a few different characters, even involving the conductor and the engineer. You get to see how they work together, conversations that they have, how the conductor interacts with the kids on the train and how he interacts with Jamie Lee Curtis's character and the way they shot this film, each car is almost like its own little world within this film. So it's almost kind of like stories within the story. I thought it was really well done. So the story, while it is predictable, it's kind of complex. I thought it was really well written. And as far as like the aesthetics of the film, I thought it was well lit. Uh, I thought each car had its own characteristics within the story. It had each car, the way it was designed and the way it was lit and the way it was shot had its own purpose to help tell the story. Like there's one car, the main car, I guess I'll call it like the sinister car. It was lit with like this purple light and uh, it had like all these dark shadows and it was very foreboding. And then you had the disco car where the dance party was and a lot of confusion was happening in this car. And so the way they shot it was, even though it's all it all takes place on a train, you don't feel like it's one of those films that takes place in one spot and gets boring. It's not like that at all. But at the same time, you you still feel confined and, and have that feeling of claustrophobia and, and dread knowing that there is a killer possibly right either next to you or right in the next car. Uh, so I like the way they did that. I like the way they shot it and the way they set it up. Overall, I think this was a really good film. I mean, we're coming off of the success of Halloween and now we're moving into the, to the, to this new slasher genre. And this is one of the first, uh, I think this also came out the same year that, uh, Friday the 13th came out. Also the fog came out the same year and Halloween two was just a year later. 
So we're moving into the slasher, and I think this was one of the best of that year. I I think, man, I really hate to say this, but I, I really think this one's a bit better than Friday the 13th because I just think it was a little bit smarter. I know I'm, pro- I'm probably going to get some hate from that, and that's okay. This is just, it's just my opinion. Now, as far as like IMDb scores go, though, Terror Train has a 5.9 and Friday the 13th has a 6.5. I actually think this is a tough call. I, I, you know, I think Terror Train should have at least a 6.5. Cause if it's, if it's, okay, if it's not better than Friday the 13th, it's at least just as good as that one. I think this film takes itself a little more seriously. Whereas in Friday the 13th, I think some of the acting was a little goofy. I don't know. I just think this one was smarter. This is a really good one. This is at the point where Jimmy Lee Curtis goes from being a victim to being the hero. And I think from here on out, she starts to play more hero or heroine parts. Heroine. Is that, is that right? I know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she starts to be, she goes from victim to heroine. Heroine. Heroine? Man, that sounds really bad. I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> she's, she's that strong female character. Uh, I, I really like that. So there you go. Terror Train. If you haven't seen it, uh, it is available on Prime and no, it's not available on Shutter. It's just, it's only available on Amazon Prime. All right. So let's move into some news. Uh, I got quite a bit of news this week. First up, uh, NBC Universal has f- officially canceled Chiller TV. Uh, so this was the channel started off as FearNet, and they actually did like a lot of of original shows. Uh, they were uh, all, it's all horror, and then it became Chiller TV, uh, and they had uh, more shows uh, developed for that. Uh, Slasher, the series, was one of those, which is now on, on Netflix. Uh, but NBC has canceled Chiller, which is really sad because, you know, we have on TV, we have Lifetime Network for women and we have the Hallmark Channel for those who like to cry a lot. And, and we have the Game Show Network for people who like game shows. And we have Comedy Central for those who like comedies. We had Chiller for people who like horror. Now we don't have that. I mean, I guess we have still have sci-fi, but sci-fi is a terrible channel. Like the only good thing on sci-fi is Channel Zero. Sorry, it's true. That's it. Uh, so I'm really sad about Chiller TV going away. And then next up, there's a new show coming out called House of Screaming Death. Uh, this actually looks really cool. This is a new, it's a new Hammer Horror series. And uh, here's, a, here's the synopsis. With its roots firmly within the world of classic Hammer Horror anthology films, The House of, the, of Screaming Death revolves around the sinister and mysterious storyteller known as the Architect, who on one eerie night in an old Bray manner is preparing to share four chilling tales with a captive audience he has invited. As each story unfolds in their own unique, bloody, and frightening way, the finale will shock and terrify as the architect also has one last story of its own to share. So let me make just one correction. This is not a series. This is an anthology film. And I don't know when this is coming out. Yeah, I don't see release date, but I will keep you posted because I love anthology films and I love hammer or horror films. So this might be... Right up my alley. I cannot wait to see this. And there is a trailer. I'll post a link on the show notes. You can find it over at screenpod.com slash podcast slash eight. That's the number eight. Uh, and you can see the trailer over there. And then uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark is getting a new film. They're doing a film version. And the writer of It is on board to write the film which is Gary Doberman, who also wrote uh, Annabelle Creation, which was actually a really good film, by the way. Uh, If you haven't seen that one, check that out. Uh, But yes, we are getting a movie version of Are You Afraid of the Dark? 
Uh, there's not a whole lot of details on when it's going to start filming, uh, but they are in the writing process. And this is going to be more, it seems, or they're predicting that it's going to be more of an anthology film, unlike Goosebumps, the movie, which was still a good movie, by the way, which was sort of an interesting take on R.L. Stein and his whole world uh, that he created. But this is going to be more of an anthology film. I cannot wait for this. I'm so excited. If you heard me talk about this show on the last episode, you know how much I love this, and I'm so excited for it. And then moving on, uh, we have more news on the new Halloween remake, or, or the new sequel, I should say. Uh, Danny McBride made some comments about the film. Now, Danny McBride, if you don't know who that is, he is in the show Eastbound and Down on HBO and uh, Vice Principals. He was also in the new Alien Covenant. So he does mostly comedy, but he's writing this one. So I, I was I was very hesitant, uh, very cautious when trying to or, or about getting excited for this one. But here, here's his latest comments. Uh, so we're kind of ignoring all the films past the first one. It picks up after the first one, but it's sort of an alternate reality. It's as if the first Halloween ended in a slightly different way. Uh, and so he goes on to say, I think you should be very scared. I mean, this isn't a comedy after all. I think there was like maybe one joke on the page, but the rest is straight horror. So hopefully it gets in people's heads and keeps them up late at night. Uh, and then he went on to make some comments that, you know, he doesn't want to anger the fans because he knows how hardcore horror fans are, especially with Halloween. So he is respecting the material as much as possible and not turning into the turning this into some goofy uh, horror comedy like a lot of the other Hall Halloween films have been like the one with um, Buster Rhymes that that film was a joke. I'm sorry it was. So I have a lot of hope for this one now. Uh, now, after at least hearing what, what McBride has to say about it, uh, I'm hopeful. I'm starting to get a little more excited about it. Uh, so we should see this one next year, I think. Uh, then Shout Factory launches Shout Studios. Now, Shout Factory, they do a lot of Blu-ray DVDs. They do a lot of special releases. Uh, they do a lot of old horror films and clean them up and release them on Blu-ray but now they have actually a film studio. So they're going to start producing or start uh, putting out some original horror content, which is really exciting, uh, exciting. So they're also, it looks like they're also going to be doing a, uh, a VOD series. Uh, not a whole lot of information on that, but again, I will put this article up on screenpod.com slash podcast slash eight. And you can check it out. Uh, I am excited for this. I like shout studios. I mean, <laughs> I like, uh, shout factory. I like their DVDs and their Blu-rays. So I am excited to see what they bring to, to the horror space. And finally, since it is Thanksgiving, uh, if you need a horror film to watch, uh, Blood Rage is now on Amazon Prime, and this is an 80s slasher that takes place on Thanksgiving, and apparently this is really, really gory. Uh, it was, it hasn't been previously available, but it is now, and it's streaming, uh, and apparently it's gotten some pretty good reviews, and I'm going to check this out this week, and I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, I might actually even do a bonus episode this week. But I, I'll probably review this film, and I also want to review uh, Raw, which is on Netflix. So, uh, perfect two perfect films for Thanksgiving. I might do a bonus episode for that. And finally, let's get to new to stream. There is a lot here. So, uh, digital rentals. I'm going. To, this is my new little section here on on new to stream. Digital rentals. Uh, Mayhem from Joe Lynch is now on Amazon, iTunes. Uh, and some other VOD places. I Remember You. This is a Finnish film, I believe. And this one is supposed to be extremely scary and really good. Uh, maybe this will come out on Netflix here soon. But if you want to rent it, it is available. Uh, Amityville, The Awakening. This film has been made for several years now. And it, we're just now seeing it released on DVD as well as streaming. And also Nails. This looks really good. It looks really creepy. Uh, it is on Amazon. 
And I think, you know, to rent a film on Amazon in standard definition version, usually like two ninety nine. So maybe I'll, I'll rent some of these and, and check them out. Uh, on Netflix, we have two two films, Bedeviled and Vastu Shastra. And I've noticed on Netflix that we have been getting a lot of uh, Indian horror films. And, you know, I honestly have not seen many of them. I haven't even bothered to check them out, but maybe I should. Because uh, I've been hearing some really good things about some of these Indian horror films. So maybe I'll check them out. Uh, on Shudder, however, we have a lot of stuff uh, just arrived this week. So we're going to start off with The Substitute. Uh, the Gate is now on Shudder. You heard me talk about that last week. Frontiers, which is a French sort of torture porn film. Uh, I started watching this a few years ago and never got around to finishing it. Uh, so now maybe I can actually finish that. Uh, Repo, The Fog. Again, with Jamie Lee Curtis. The Wraith. This is a film starring Charlie Sheen. I remember watching this when I was in Nebraska uh, as, a, as a little kid. Uh, Charlie Sheen is like this ghost racer guy, and, and he takes revenge on the people who caused his death. Pretty cool movie. Midnight Meat Train. One of my favorite Clive Barker films other than Hellraiser. Uh, Creep, which is another sort of subway slasher film. I don't know a lot about it. I've been wanting to watch this movie for a few years now and never got around to doing it. Maybe I will now. Uh, High Tension, another sort of gore fest torture porn film. I did I did actually review this on Scream Stream, on the original Scream Stream. I don't remember which episode it was, but I do remember reviewing that film. Uh, the Backwoods, don't know much about it. Irreversible, I've heard this film is crazy. Uh, there's a lot of, it's like a trigger film, so if, if you have certain triggers, you probably wouldn't want to watch it. Uh, Wishmaster 1 through 4. I watched the first one, never bothered to watch the sequels. Cube, Cube 2, and Cube 0 are now on Shudder. I finally watched Cube for the first time uh, the other day. Really good movie. Man, I wish I'd watched this sooner. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. If you have to, if you don't have Shudder, get the seven-day free trial. To watch Cube, because uh, I, I think oh you know what it is uh, it's also on Amazon Prime too. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can stream it there. Uh, watch that movie; it's really really good. Uh, Mulholland Drive never bothered to watch that one. Altitude I reviewed this on another podcast several years ago called uh, Two Mugs in a Movie. I, I didn't like it; I thought it was a horrible film. Uh, Malevolence, which uh, I've been wanting to see for a while. The Wicker Man from 1975. This is the one with Christopher Lee. Worth watching. Uh, the Howling. The only Howling film worth watching. Uh, Excision. Never seen this. Don't know much about it. And Another Evil, which is a horror comedy. Uh, which looks pretty good. I do want to see this one. And then also Tales of the Unexpected, which is an English... Looks like an English horror series. I don't know when this was made. There's not a lot of information about it on Shudder's website. But there are nine episodes, and each one's about like 25 minutes long. So I'll check that out and let you know what that's like. So that's going to wrap up this episode of Scream Stream. Again, I do apologize for this being a day late. Uh, like I said, we had a really busy weekend. Uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. I hope you have a really good holiday. I hope you stay safe. Eat lots of food. Actually, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't say that. Eat enough food. <laughs> eat, eat enough food. Be with your family. Stay safe. I do want to remind you that ScreamStream is listener supported. You can support the show at patreon.com slash ScreamStream. Uh, if, if you sign up for at least a dollar a month, you'll get some extra content, some extra really cool content, uh, and you'll also be supporting me. And I do want you to know how important your support is, whether it's through Patreon, through my Amazon affiliate link over at screenpod.com, or just sharing it with your friends and family. Uh, you encourage me to keep the show going. Our numbers are improving every week. And I'm so grateful that you have stuck around and chose to listen to me. Uh, and you, you know, you probably do listen to other, other horror podcasts. I do. Uh, there's several that I listen to. 
but I do appreciate that you keep coming back to me every single week. Uh, if you have a movie you'd like me to review, send me your suggestion to ScreamStreamCast at gmail.com or go over to ScreamPod.com slash contact and just fill out the form. Remember to subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, TuneIn Radio, Overcast, uh, and wherever else uh, podcasts are served. Music for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. And until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. <laughs>